Hi, this is Kerry with Multicopter Warehouse, and today we're going to show you how to set up the camera on the Inspire 1 and the Phantom 3. Now they're identical in the way they work within the application, so this is going to be very straightforward for both copters. Now we're going to go into the application here, and we're going to go to Function, and make sure our image format is where we want it. Some people like shooting in JPEG, other people like shooting in RAW, some people like both. I prefer shooting in RAW. It gives me more latitude when I'm editing the images. I like my screen to be in the 16 by 9 format, so I see as much on the screen as possible. Auto white balance, typically good enough for most purposes. My video size, I run at 3840 by 2160 at 24 frames per second. You may want 19 by 20 uh, or 1920 by 1080 at 60 or 4096 at 24. Whatever your preferences is, you can set the video size. Under style, I'm going to go to none. I'm going to do a custom though, and I'm going to change my custom. I'm going to drop my my sharpness by one, my contrast by three, and my saturation by two. Now that combined with this other setting here for a log is going to give me the flattest image. And by flat, it's going to look washed out a little bit. There's not going to be a lot of vibrance to it. It's not going to look all pretty right out of the camera. It's going to look a little dull. However, when I'm editing it, it's going to give me more latitude in getting the look that I want, which is called color grading. I'm going to adjust the contrast and I'm going to adjust the saturation and the colors the way I want them. And by using these settings, it's going to give me the most room when I'm editing to make the image look the way I want. So these are the settings that I'm using. Now I'm also going to have the histogram turned on so that I see here on the bottom where my exposure is so I can adjust that. I use MOV movie format. That's going to be personal preference again based on your editor. They're both H.264 so it really doesn't matter too much and I have NTSC set on mine because I'm in the US. Now when we get to our exposure by default when we get back here we're in automatic mode and I can tap somewhere on the screen to do an exposure based on where I touch on the screen. Now, if I want to override that with manual controls I can click on here, adjust my ISO, adjust my shutter speed and get it dialed in exactly where I want. Now at the bottom I do see what my exposure is right now which is it was a minus 0 0.03 there plus 03 so I can adjust that to get exactly the exposure that I want. Now for me I always want to try and shoot at 1 50th of a second if possible but without a neutral density filter that's probably not going to be possible outside and we'll have neutral density filters available for the Phantom 3 uh, mid-July and we already have them for the Inspire 1. Now here's an important point. If we're using these manual settings and we click on here to close that we've gone back into automatic. The only way to save these settings is to bring up the settings window and then swipe across the screen from right to left which closes it or puts the settings away so that we can get to them later. I still have control by turning the wheel. All right, now I'm adjusting my shutter. If I click on that, I'm adjusting my ISO. So that's really handy for adjusting my exposure in the sky and getting exactly the look that I want. If I want to get back out of the manual controls, I can just click on the, the control and I'm back in automatic. So working with the camera is very simple. You just have to understand a couple of those key things. We went through the setup process and we looked at the automatic versus manual settings. So hopefully this is going to help you get the best shots possible. This has been Kerry Garrison with Multicopter Warehouse. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.